Yes, Mr. Hodge. Commissioner, the next witness is Mr. Perry. Just give us half a moment, Mr. Perry. We'll give you some space in which to sit and put your papers. Now, perhaps, if you can go into the box, Mr. Perry. Water will be provided, <laughs> Mr. Kerry. Uh, Perry, now, uh, Mr. Perry, do you uh, wish to take an oath or uh, an have oath, an affirmation? Thanks. Thanks. Yes. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. The truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you very much, Mr. Perry. Do sit down. Yes, Mr. Sherry. Um, Mr. Perry, what is your full name, sir? Sorry. <laughs> um, Brett Robert Perry. And what is your business address? Uh, 201 Sussex Street, Sydney. And are you a general manager of group credit structuring within CBA? Yes, I am. And have you made a witness statement in relation to rubric 326? the ID number of which is CBA.9000.0052. Yes. Do you have a copy there? Yes. I'll come to a couple of corrections. Sure. But I should have asked you, did you also receive a summons to attend the Royal Commission and give evidence? Yes. Um, perhaps I should tender the summons first, Commissioner. Exhibit 3.92 will be the summons to Mr Perry. And Mr, uh, Mr Perry, if you have the witness statement there, please, I understand you wish to make a correction to paragraph 55? Yes, I do. What's the correction? Um... What is the correction, uh, sir? The, I'd like to uh, um, remove the uh, words, the final words, rather than as a result of a policy of Bank West. And could you, would you strike those words out with a pen and initial in the margin, please? And I understand the next correction is in paragraph 70, subparagraph B, is that right? Yes. And what's the correction there? Um, I'd like to change the date from currently 2012 to 2010. It's in the second line. In the second line. Did you make that correction and then initial the margin? And finally, sir, in paragraph 85. Yes. I understand you wish to correct a misspelling of a word? Yes, I'd like to cor correct the word of publicly, the fourth word, in par fourth word of paragraph 85. Um, with those corrections, um, Mr Perry, are the contents of your witness statement true and correct? Yes, they are. I tender that, Commissioner. Exhibit 3.93 will be the statement and exhibits of uh, Mr Perry in relation to rubric 3-26. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes, Mr Hodge. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr Perry, I think you've explained, you're currently the general manager of group credit structuring at the Commonwealth Bank, is Correct. That right? And group credit structuring is what deals with what is sometimes referred to as troublesome or impaired assets, is yeah, that that's right? That's correct, yes. That is, in broad terms, assets where either the bank has impaired them, that is, it does not believe that it will manage to recover the full amount of what it has loaned out or is entitled to, or are troublesome where there is a risk that that might The occur. higher credit risk, yes. yes. And we've heard some references to CAM, which is credit and asset management. Yes. CAM was a section of Bankwest. It was, yes. And that section effectively performed the same function as your in relation to Bankwest assets as your GCS section performs in relation to CBA assets. Correct, correct. And the CAM section from Bank West has now been rolled into GCES. Yeah, yes, uh, the, the, yeah, we merged in, I think, around 2012. Yes. 
And you've been put forward by the Commonwealth Bank as the witness to give evidence about the situation of Mr Kelly and Silver Sun and Wildlines? Correct. You weren't involved in directly in the dealings with Silver Sun and Wildlines? No, as I've said in my statement, I've never worked for Bankwest. And you have been or you were the head of GCS back in 2000, well, back for about nine years or so, is that yeah, right? Yeah, in its former names, yeah, but in CBA. All right, but never in relation to Bankwest? Never in relation to Bankwest. And so I just want to make sure that everyone understands, when you're speaking about this, this is not something that you were directly involved in? No, I'm speaking by reviewing the file. Yes. And we'll go through a few things, but where you've had to make commentary about what has or hasn't happened, you've just had to effectively derive that from what you can see in the documents? Yes. All right. Now, I want to start by having a look with you at the original loan assessment, which you've looked at. Can we bring up BRP-4? That's CBA.4000.0058.7297. It's CBA.4000.0058.7297. This is an internal document that you've exhibited to your statement, Mr Perry? Yes. And this is the credit risk, although it says facility amendment, this is for the, seems to be for the original facility in relation to wild lines to buy just the first property? Yes. So it's just for the 1.75 million or so? Yes. And then ultimately, as we know and you know, that was then amended and increased, is that right? Yes. And if we go to page dot seven two nine eight. We see in the middle of the page there's an explanation which is clients have paid down the Zen Gold debts. Yes. And can you just explain so we might take that down because that's not been properly redacted. Do you have a copy of the document there? Yes. We might just work off your... Was it BRP4? BRP4. Thank you, Mr Perry. <coughs> You're on page dot seven two nine eight. Yes. And that refers first to clients having paid down the Zengold debts just wanted to understand, have you familiarised yourself or are you aware of what the situation was with Zen Gold? No, I only uh, looked at the Wild Lines and Silver Sun. Okay. You're aware then, I assume, from looking through the documents and the references in the documents that these particular players had had some previous special purpose entity that they'd used to borrow money from Bank West? Yes. I, I, yes, I... I I'd, one of the things I noted on the file early is that um, they were quite experienced and, and uh, syndicated property investors. Yes. And then the other thing that you can see then is that there are, there's a reference to SPs, which I assume is statements of position. Yes. And it's explained that the statements, or what these sta statements of position are for the following key players, and it runs through who the main investors are. Yes. In the syndicates. Yes. In, or in that syndicate said the above provide the majority of the shareholding in this new venture and have been involved in the successful Zengold project too. Their vast expertise and asset position suggests that they can adequately cover any contingencies should the need arise via other resources. Added comfort can be taken in the fact that above income streams does not include their spouses additional revenue. 
I see that. And then if we go over to page dot seven three zero one. which should start at the top credit risk submission. It's up on the screen now, oh, if that helps. Yeah, uh, yep. And I just wanted to ask, you see the risk grade is said to be six. Yes. Could you just explain to the commissioner what that means about the riskiness of the asset? Yeah, um, from my... Um, um, Research the Bankwest risk grade system went, was I think from one to ten, and um, uh, if I recall, um, risk grade six was um, I, I can't recall how it was, but it was it was mid mid scale, a bit beyond mid scale. Yeah. All right. Sorry, it was. Just repeat what you said. I'm I sorry. Said, I said mid scale. Mid scale. Yeah, mid -scale. Yes. And then. If we go to BRP-18, which is CBA.0517.0096.1700, No, CBA.0517.0096.1700. Yes. So this is the credit risk submission for Silver Sun. Yes. And again, you've exhibited this to your statement. Yes, I have. And the risk grade for this is also said to be six. Correct. And then if we go over, if we go over the page to dot one seven zero one. We just blow up the bottom three paragraphs of the page. And what's being recorded in the credit submission is that there's initial loan term of three years, which will then coincide with a property revaluation. And the strategy of the syndicate is to hold the property for the next three to five years and complete the rezoning. Correct. And what I'm interested in understanding is, is that typical in your experience that property developers might have a strategy that extends beyond the length of the facility? Um, uh, it, it's, it's, no, I would, I would expect that the um, term of the um, facility should match for particularly for a project finance sort of structured finance arrangement, it should match the end of the term. And the, 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 the issue with requesting a three-year term is um, that um, there, always, there always is a refinance risk, which is sophisticated developers, I'm sure, and they are aware of that risk. And the, pro the refinance risk is you assume and you take the risk as, as, a, as an investor, as a develop, property developer, that um, at the end of that term, either the the term will be extended, the the, the uh, facility will be extended, um, and that uh, whether the facility will be extended at all, rather, and it may well be extended on different terms. Yes, I understand. Sorry, long way. Yeah. And we'll return to that point in a moment. Yep. Can we go then to BRP dash twenty five? And that is CBA.4000.0074.5769.
So this then is a credit risk review that happens for wild lines in July of 2008. You can see, if we go over the next page, that might be easier. If we go over to dot 5770, I'm sorry, I said July, it's actually August. Do you see that up in the top left hand corner of the page? Prepared and recommended by? Ah, oh, yes, yes. And if we go over to dot 5771, And at the bottom of the page, we see a section pricing. Yes. Can we just blow up that section? And you'll see it said, current pricing is based on BBSY rate plus a margin of 1.75%. 1 it is noted at time of approval, comments by John Sullivan stated that a gearing level of 60% and <coughs> RAROC, what does that stand for? Um, risk adjusted return on capital. Circa 40%, a 1.5% margin was satisfactory. Proposed for pricing to continue at current margins to be reviewed upon development of funding. Yes. Now, I'm interested because we'll come back to this over and over again in understanding what happens here because we know it doesn't stay at a margin of 1.75%, it rises to 2.25%. Yep. Are you able to explain to the commissioner um, what's the bank trying to factor in? In terms of the... In ch changing it from 1.75% to 2.25%. Um, I, I, from my um, look, uh, review of the, of the file, the uh, offer had a different date or different uh, rate I think that's what you get, where you're going to. Um, there would have been an approval that I couldn't locate on the file by the credit signing off on the on that uh, on the what the final this final approval. Yeah. I, I, what I'm trying to get you to yeah. explain is yeah. something else. I think maybe if I bring up another document to help you, can we bring up RCD.0014.0015.0002? So this is an email sent from Mr. Steele, who's the relationship manager we've seen named, that says, due to the nature of the facility land bank, the pricing has been increased to BBSY plus 2.25 per cent. Yes, I see that. So does that assist then to understand and just explain to the commissioner what the thought process in relation to the setting of the margin? So if you go back to your previous document. Yes, that's BRP-25. That so um, I, I don't know, I, I don't know why that's changed, um, but this document does say um, that the, uh, that the drop in Rarock is a result of um, the asset, the land being classified as a specialised asset, which may have contributed to the approval to increase pricing, but I don't know. Is it, you give some evidence in your statement mm. about how the bank goes about setting its interest rate margin. Yep. Is it, there's nothing sinister about this mm. question. Is mm. it possible that Bankwest has made a decision in 2008 that it's going to adjust the pricing that it's charging for land banking? Uh, I don't know. You don't know, I all don't right. Know. And so perhaps if we can consider this, because we'll come to it in a moment, is one of the issues that was becoming apparent in 2008 that there was increased risk associated with property development and with in global development? Uh, I, I don't know the timeline, but if we go... We, I don't, we don't need I don't, to do it in the context of this. I don't know in this particular timeline, yeah. But let's put aside what's happened in Wildlines and Silver Sun. You were the head of GCS as at 
2000, or you about to become the head of GCS as at yep. the end of 2008. Yep. You've been in banking for mm -hmm. 34 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. is that right? Yes. If you cast your mind back to 2008, which is as the GFC is yep. Un yep. unfolding, mm -hmm. was it, do you recall it being obvious that there was increased risk associated with property development and in globo land development. Okay. So my opinion, not related to this file, yes. of course, but um, yeah, I, there were, after the GSC, there was, there was concern about the impact on, on property. Yeah. And in terms of your understanding of the process of setting margins, which you've given some evidence about, is one of the factors that's relevant to the setting of the margin, what the risk is that the bank associates with a particular yeah. line. Yeah. So the the if if to summarise it, it's it's cust um, the, the two elements are customers and markets, and um, yeah, because that's that's one of the uh, that's that's the key, particularly in this transaction. And when you talk about market, does that mean the particular type of lending that's being engaged in? Correct. Right. So uh, I think I refer into my statement as industry, which is uh, which would apply to to any customer a review of the industry that they operate in. All right. Now, at the end of two thousand and eight, CBA acquired Bankwest. Yes. And you're aware that there was a review or a series of reviews that were undertaken of the. Bankwest portfolio. Um, I, I was aware. Um, I, I was aware of it, but I wasn't involved in it. Okay. What I'd like to do is uh, some documents. It may be that you're able to assist us with these. It may be that you're not. Can we bring up CBA dot triple zero two dot two zero seven six dot seven four six one? This is a submission to the Risk Committee of Bankwest for a meeting on the 25th of March 2009. Right. Have you seen this document before today? Um, no, I don't okay. recall seeing this. All right. It wasn't on the file. It wasn't on the I don't recall seeing it on the file, no. On the file for Wild Lines yeah. and Silver Sun. Yeah. All right. Are you aware that Bank West had identified that it had a very significant exposure to what it defined as commercial property. Um, I, I became aware of that from a review of this file. Yes. Okay. Are you aware that you see the second dash point under key findings that commercial property represents 50.3% of total committed exposure? Sorry. Do you see the second dash point under key findings? At $14.2 billion, commercial property represents 50.3% of total committed exposure. Yes, I see that. Were you aware that it was of that magnitude? Um, no. Okay. Were you aware that there was a concern within CBA about the level of exposure on the Bankwest book to commercial property? Um, no. Were you, all right. Were you aware that there was a concern about the worsening of risk associated with commercial property? Well, I think that was, uh, well, my view is that was a concern right across CBA as well. All right. Were you aware that there were decisions that needed to be made, I shouldn't say needed, there were decisions that were made to attempt to manage that risk for the Bank West portfolio by setting caps on the amount of commercial property exposure? Um, uh, I wasn't, no, no. Okay. I, I am aware today of the concept of caps and targets we have in CBA on, on industries, but not, not, uh, not then. Okay. Are you aware now that in 2009, Bank West started to introduce internally caps on the extent of its exposure to commercial property? I'm aware now, yes, not uh, then. Sorry? <laughs> not then. No, no, I uh, understand. Yeah. But again, we, you're now coming now to look yep. back at a file yep. from yep. 2010. Yep. 
it's important that we be able to put this in some sort of yeah. context, which is, as you understand it, as at 2009, first CB Bank West had a significant exposure to commercial property. You agree with that? Yes. Second, it was regarded as an overexposure to commercial property. Yes. Third, that in order to manage that overexposure, there were caps that were in place on the lending in commercial property? Um, as a result of the review of this file, I, I understand that, yes. All right. And then that has a ramification to the approach that's taken to the management of the book. You agree with that? Yes. What does that mean? The, the witness says well, he hasn't seen... Well, if the witness seen... doesn't know, he will no doubt tell me, Mr Sherry. Well, but the question doesn't make sense, Your Honour, with the greatest respect. Yes. Well, Mr Hodge, do you want to rephrase the question? No, no, that's fine. I... I don't want to rephrase the question. Can I take you then to paragraph 59 of your statement, Mr Perry? We bring up paragraph 59 of Mr Perry's statement. What you say in paragraph 59 is that you're not aware of any Bankwest records that indicate that there was any general policy to withdraw from funding property dealing for existing customers before the facility expiry date. Um, not general policy. There was an email that I saw, but um, not a, I didn't see a policy document. Right. Well, if we bring up BRP-23 CBA.0517.0096.5020. This, this is the email that you referred to. And can I perhaps to assist just bring up a more legible version, which is CBA.002.2078.8755? CBA.0002.2078.8755. Yep. All right, and then can we go to page dot eight seven five seven? This, I hope, in slightly more legible form, is the email that you were referring to, Mr. Perry, sent by Mr. Clark. Yes. And. This is the email that's informed your understanding of the risks in Bankwest? Uh, yes, yes. And what you understand is that there was this concern, which was 51% of assets have been classified as commercial property, and there was a target by the end of 2009 to reduce this to 45%. Yes. And then there's a series of things that are set out as the following actions that need to be taken at a minimum. Yes. And the point that you're making in your statement is that these actions are not concerned with attempting to terminate existing facilities before those facilities reach their expiry date? Um, 
Sorry, can you ask the question again? The point that you're making in your statement in paragraph 59 that we looked at before is that these actions are not concerned with trying to terminate a facility before the facility has reached its expiry date. I'm not saying that. Uh, you that's why I amended my witness statement from the previous, um, previously, paragraph 50. Mm. Yes, the... <laughs> <laughs> what you're trying to say is, Bankwest isn't trying to exit early from loans that it's already made that have an expiry date and that aren't in default. Correct, correct. But what goes along with that is, when the facility hits its expiry date, Bankwest may not renew that facility. And that's a different thing. It's, yeah, it's a different thing, yeah. And that, and the borrower enters into the facility at the time they enter into it, they understand, or they ought to understand, that it has a particular term. Correct. And the borrower takes the risk that as at the end of that expiry date, Bankwest may be willing to refinance. Or may not be willing to refinance on the same terms. Yeah, That's right, may not before. be willing, may just not be willing to extend the facility or may not be willing to extend it on the same terms. Yes. That's your point? Yes. And that's the same for any borrower that's dealing with a bank. Correct. And one of the things that you understand that happened, that happened within Bank West was that once this level of risk associated with, in, with borrowing for commercial property was identified, that there were then caps that were put in place to try to reduce the level of borrowing for commercial property. And the consequence was that when it came to considering extending a facility or refinancing a facility, that this, this policy would be relevant. Yes. Because extending a facility is not terminating a facility early, it's making a decision that the bank wants to continue or enter into a new relationship. At the end of a term, yes. That's right. And that is the point that you were trying to encapsulate 59 of your statement. Could I go back to 59 sure. and just reread it? Yep. And as so, to, so, I'm sorry, go on. No, you can. No, so, no, no. Uh, the, the, my point of paragraph 59 is the question uh, referred to, um, if I can just read it. The question re referred that the Q3 um, indicated that Bank was, with, was withdrawing from property dealings for existing customers. Um, withdrawing, I took to mean that you just withdraw during term of the facility. And that's, why, that's what I meant by paragraph 59. Um, we wouldn't be draw, withdrawing during, during term, that we let the term run its natural, they'd let the term run its natural term. That's right, and that's what Bank West did in relation to the Wild Lines and Silver Sun facilities. Correct. And on your review, there's nothing that suggests that Bank West tried to look for some default to terminate the facility early? Before the initial two years and three years, uh, no. And in fact, what happened is just once it got to 2010, Bankwest wanted to reduce its exposure to commercial property and therefore it evaluated extending the facilities in that light. Uh, you mentioned 2010, are you talking yes. Silver Sun or Wild Lines? Well, both, two, both Silver Sun and Wild Lines get extended in 2010. Oh, but I've jumped you forward. Would you like to, yeah, let's I, go yeah, back. In 2009, yep. Bank West has a policy that it has implemented. It's considering whether to extend the Wild Lines facility. It considers that in light of its policy, is your understanding of the document? Yes. All right. And 
there's something that you say in your statement, which is at paragraph 25. Can we bring up paragraph 25 of Mr Perry's statement. This is about a meeting that occurred on the 8th of June, 2009. Yes. And this is the meeting where Mr. Kelly says he was told that Bankwest did not want to continue with the wild lines facility and would likely ask for the loan to be repaid on 31st of August, 2009. Yes. And what you say in your paragraph is that apart from the fact that there was a meeting on the 8th of June, the records that you reviewed indicate that the summary of what happened at that meeting was incorrect? Um, let me just think. Um, uh, Can I help you, Mr I'll, I'll, Perry? You help me and I'll... Uh... <laughs> again, again, it's not a trick. Mm. The, what you looked at was the file note, or what appeared to be a file note that had been provided to you or that you found on the file, is that right? Correct. And it had a signature on it? Correct. You assumed it was a file note? Yes. It didn't contain any reference to the fact that Mr Kelly had been informed that Bankwest didn't want to extend the facilities? No, that's correct. And you, naturally enough, just had to go off what records you could find on the file. Correct, correct. But what you now understand is that wasn't actually a file note of the meeting. That was, Mr Kelly says, that were the notes of what he was going to say at the meeting. I, I understand now. And what Mr Kelly says was said at the meeting is something that is then reflected in an email that Mr Chapman sent shortly after the meeting, and you've exhibited that. That's yes. what I take you to that. It's BRP-13 CBA.0517.0100.0001. So you looked at this email before? Yes. And Insofar as Mr Chapman says the bank has recently made a decision to cease funding new property dealings for both non-bank and existing bank clients, that reflects your understanding of the policy direction that had been taken by Bankwest? Um, yes. And what Mr Chapman then says a little further on is, although the annual review is not yet due, it is likely that the bank may not renew the wild lines facilities on expiry at the end of August. I see that. And again, that just reflects what it is that Mr Kelly says was communicated to him at the meeting in June of 2009. Yes. And as it turns out, Bankwest was prepared to extend the wildlands facilities. Yes. And what Bankwest wanted to do was to extend them, but nevertheless to exit from them as soon as it was practically possible to do so. Yes, I think there was a reference in Mr Clark's note, yes. I'm sorry, could you say that again? So, so, so um, refinance was, was referred to as an option and that was what was being communicated here? Yes, what Bankwest wanted was for Mr Kelly's syndicate to refinance with somebody else. Correct. And that consideration reflected the view that, at a general level, Bankwest was overexposed to commercial property. Yes. And you would say that is a prudent risk management approach on the part of the bank. Um, I, 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 yes, it is. And, and, a, and a regulatory pro approach as well, I would add. All right. And there was ultimately some negotiation as to the terms on which Bankwest would be prepared to extend the loan? Yes. And Bankwest originally... So, so, so can I just... Yes. Um, the loan had expired, so it was... A, a, 
the loan had expired and it was a new facility that needed to be put in place. Yes. That's right. This is, Priority. This is mm. whatever is happening mm. here, mm. these are new contractual arrangements yes. that are being entered into. Yes. All right. And there's a negotiation over the terms of those new contractual arrangements. Yep. On the one hand, between the bank and on the other hand, at arm's length with the borrower. Yes. Wild lines. And Bankwest's original position, which was a 45% LVR with a particular pricing, wasn't in the end what was adopted? Uh, no, it wasn't. The LVR ended up being 50% with a slightly higher margin rate. Correct. And as you understand it, that reflected the valuation of the risk that the bank was prepared to take on in entering into this further facility. Yes. All right. Now then in 2010, Project Magellan occurs. Yes. Are you familiar with Project Magellan? Uh, um, I, I, was, I knew the name at the time, but I wasn't involved in it, so no, I, I didn't. All right. Do you have an understanding now of what Project Magellan was? Um, only from a review of information. All right. Well, could you just explain to the Commissioner what your understanding is now of what Project Magellan is? Um, my understanding that the um, uh, as a result of um, concerns around the exposure, um, I don't know what, quali what qualifying uh, um, customers w will be asked to be reviewed. That's all I know about Magellan. All right. Do you understand that it was a review part of deciding whether adequate provision I, I don't had know. been made? I don't okay. Know. All you know is, from what you can see it on the happened. file, that there was a review of some files. Yep. All right. Okay. And then can we go to BRP-56? Which is CBA.0517.0096.1871. So this is the Project Magellan file review. Yes. And we can see that this was completed on the 25th of June, 2010. Yes. Ten. Yes. And I understand you've reviewed this document in order to give evidence to the Commission. Yeah, I reviewed this part, document as part of my file review. Okay. And then if we go to the page ending dot five, We see this is a section that's completed by the reviewer. Yes. And the reviewer is not somebody from Commonwealth or Bank West. Do you agree with that? Yes. It's somebody external, in this case, Grant Thornton. Yes. And they, or well that, those two people have completed a review of both borrowers as at the 13th of May, 2010. And they set out, we can see on the first page, various matters that they've taken into account. Yes. On that page. And then if we go over to dot 1876, They set out various other things, including what they considered to be the various risks associated, be the various risks associated with the borrowings. Yes. And they note that the risk grade for one is six and for the other is six, but for the second one that it's likely too low. Yes. And then if we go over the, and I'm sorry, I should say, do you know B2 is Silver Sun? Um, I think there was reference to it. Um, no, I didn't, it made reference on the previous page. All right, you understand that one of them is Silver Sun and one of them is Wild Lines. Correct. All right. And then if we go over the page to dot 1877, there's then some conclusions set out as to 
what the recommendations are. Yes. And in relation to B2, which I'll suggest is Silver Sun, it said that evaluation is required. Yes. And then if we look at the project recommendation, it's red for Silver Sun. Again, I'll suggest Silver Sun with an urgent valuation required of Silver Sun's property. Yes. And B1, which is wild lines, is considered to be green. Now, if we go over the page to dot 1878, this is now a separate section. This is being done by the Bankwest Review Panel. And the panel decision is that the files should be moved to CAM. Do that. And that the risk grade for each of the files should be seven plus. <coughs> yes. And that they should be classified as red. Yes? Yes. And you see CP adjustment not accepted. CP stands for collective provision. Correct. So collective provision adjustment not accepted, and then there's some recommended actions. Yes. And one of them is that CAM is to manage the file. Yes. The second is that the LVR is to be reduced to 50%. You see that? Yes. The third is that there's to be a recalculation of collective provision. Yes. And then the fourth is that Don, who presumably is Don Galbraith, is to review and advise. Yes. And what was Don Galbraith's role? I understand that he was head of CAM at the time. All right. And do you know why there was this difference between the decision made by the review panel and what had been recommended by the Grant Thornton reviewers? No, I don't. Okay. Have you made any inquiries to try to understand that? Um, no. No, I haven't. Did you realise before now that there was this difference in approach? Um, I, I realised, I, yeah, I realised that the, uh, that the, um, the, yes, the difference here. Yeah. Right, but you, you're not able to assist us to understand why there's that difference? No. All right. Is it, perhaps if we then have a look at another document, which is BRP-57. So this is a strategy paper dated the 9th of September 2010. Yes. Now this is a paper from Greg O'Brien, who is in CAM, to his, his manager in CAM. I'm sorry, I'm told we have to take this down because these names are also subject to a non-publication direction. Could I get you to go off your volume? Sure. What, uh... It's BRP-57. And it said the group name is described as Zengold Corporation. Yes. As you understand it, though, there's only there's only two borrowers that are got, being dealt with as part of this. One is Wildlines, and the other is Silver Sun. Correct. And the group risk grade is seven plus. Yes. And that reflects the decision that had been made by the Project Magellan panel. For Wildlines and Silver Sun. Yes. Yes. And then if we go over to the page ending dot five five nine seven. Yes. You see the section at the top of the page which is reasons for impairment. Yes. 
And we can probably bring that page up. I think that won't be covered. So this is the review explaining, or sorry, this is the section of the strategy paper explaining why it is that these loans have been impaired. Yes. Because, and we probably need to draw some distinction here, there doesn't appear to have been a specific provision made for these two loans. Um, I wasn't, I have, didn't see a provision during my review, that's correct. It w insofar as there's a provision, it's just as part of the collective provision? Yes. And could you explain to the Commissioner the distinction between specific provision and collective provision? Okay. Um, a, a, collect <coughs> a collective provision is calculated on a formula basis um, based on the risk profile of, of, of an exposure. A um, individually assessed provision um, is uh, a, a manual assessment of the loss on that particular exposure. And so in the case of a collective provision, that might be a collective provision made for a particular part of the book that is in a particular area or industry or something like that. Is that right? Or is it more complicated than that? Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's necessary to explain to us any more than um, what you've said about not, what is a collective Not unless provision? you want to. But, uh, I don't think we do. So what happens then when you look at 2.2 .2 is that it's setting out the points that have been made by the Magellan Review and Grant Thornton and then the recommended course that have been taken by the panel. Yes. And then it notes that at present there were no defaults, either monetary or non-monetary. Yes. But a revaluation of the security was occurring. Yes. And it was possible that that revaluation might result in a breach of the LVR covenant? Yes. In fact, we know that didn't occur. It didn't occur, no. In fact, the revaluation increased the value of the property and therefore decreased the LVR. Yes. All right. And then... If we then go to CBA.4000.0074.8586, have you seen this document before, Mr. Perry? Uh, yes, I have seen that document before. Okay, in the course of preparing yes, for evidence. Yes, Is yes. that right? Yes. And Frank Howen is or was a senior manager at Business Credit? Yes. <coughs> Business Credit was one of the divisions of Bankwest? Yes. Another division was Property Finance? Um, yes. Uh, business Credit was, yes, probably in risk management, but I'm unsure. Oh, you think that might have been in risk management, yes. that section? Yes. All right. Do you... This is an analysis, then, that's being provided by Mr Howen to Don Galbraith, who's the head of yes. CAM at the time. Yes. And you see at the end of the email, Mr Howen expresses the view, I don't consider there to be any basis for this group to be placed in CAM. However, there is a reasonable likelihood the wild lines and silver sun exposures could lead to significant land development financing opportunities in the next few years, depending on property appetite at the time. As a result, it may well be better placed with PFU. Yes. And PFU is what we were talking about, property finance. Yes. Do you know why it was, or have you been able to ascertain why it was that the group was placed into CAM? Um, I, I did ask the question, and um, the only thing I can ascertain is Cam. The uh, Cam decided that uh, they'd go with the recommendation of, Mag of Magellan and put it in to Cam. All right. 
Commissioner, is so, that a con so, <coughs> sorry? Go on. So, so um, can I comment on, on yes. this? Yes. So um, my my only comment on on Frank's note is um, he was asked for an opinion and he's given it. He's entitled to his opinion. That's one first view. Um, I I note from the review of the file um, further on that that um, uh, Frank's boss, I think, the manager, had a, had a different view to Frank. So um, it just demonstrated to me that there was a little bit of uncertain around the uh, different views. And whether it should be in camp. Yep. And who is Mr Howland's boss that you're referring to? Um, John Howe. I see. Yep. Is that a... Con oh, I'm sorry, actually, can I ask one more question? Mm. When you refer to the view of Mr Howe and later in the file. Is that from early 2011 that you're speaking Yeah, I of? think it is. It's, I think it might be on the way, on the other, on the other side, of when it came out of CAM. Yes, yeah. OK. Commissioner, is this that... This to be tendered? This yes, Commissioner, email. I tender that document. Email Hound Galbraith, 26 May 2010, CBA 4000-0074-8586, Exhibit 3.94. Commissioner, is that a convenient time? Yes. 2 p.m. Yes, Mr Hodge. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr Perry, before lunch we dealt with the file in relation to Silver Sun and wild lines being moved into CAMS. And then, as you know, there was a meeting that occurred on the 29th of November 2010 after CAMS had become involved with the file. You know that? About the meeting on the 29th of November? Uh, yes, could I, have, could I have a look at the document? Sure. Why don't you go to BRP-34? So that's CBA.4000.0072.0227. Now we've seen already, well the Commissioner's seen already up on the screen, Mr Kelly's file note of this meeting, but this is an internal bank call report note that's prepared, been prepared. Is that right? Um, I believe so. And you've reviewed that for the purposes yep. of giving evidence? Yes. And you know that one of the complaints that Mr Kelly has is that as at the end of December 2010, when the offers were sent out, that the offers did not reflect what had been discussed on the 29th of November 2010. Yes, I do recall that. And do you agree that Bankwest's own internal note does not reflect the conditions that were to be imposed as part of the offer? Can I just recall the conditions? Yes, comparison? would you like to, why don't we bring that up? So if we put the note on one side of the screen and on the other side bring up the next document, which is BRP-35, CBA.0517.0096.1901. So, and then if we go to p the third page of the document on the right, page 1903. Yes. And we look at the bottom of the page, we see that there's to be evidence of unconditional refinance approval by the expiry date, and that's a special undertaking. Yes. And that was different do you agree from what was discussed at the meeting on the 29th of November, which was that they would be making, they would continue to seek refinance? Yes. And then you see at the bottom of the page on 1903, the document on the right, that there's a requirement for six months interest yes. to be deposited. And again, that doesn't seem to have been discussed on the 29th of November. Yes. You agree with that? Yes. And in the course of preparing to give evidence, have you considered the differences between what the bank had been discussing on the 29th of November 2010 and what the bank then offered at the end of December 2010? Um, I, I do recall seeing a document 
um, the, appro of the approval that had the um, the uh, requirement for for um, cash. Cover. Sorry, could you say? Oh, you'll have to say that again. I, I think I do recall seeing an approval which required the cash cover. I'm not sure. An, an internal approval, yeah, you mean? Yeah. Yes, but my question is: Do you recall having turned your mind before giving evidence? to the difference between what had been discussed on the 29th of November 2010 with the customer and what was offered at the end of December 2010. No, I hadn't. No, I hadn't. It's not no, something you no, thought about? No, it's not something I picked up in the discrepancy. Sorry. All right. Having noted it now, do you have any view about the particular course that the bank took in discussing one thing on the 29th of November and then having something different in the offer that was sent out at the end of December? No, I don't. I don't. Um, a couple of occasions I've seen like um, terms in papers that have been approved separately, uh, approved differently. But um, did you want me to talk about the deposits? Or possibly why the deposits there? Or you, my, I can only give an opinion. I, well, you're obviously experienced mm. in relation mm. to the operations of these mm. sorts of sections. Yeah. Well, if, it might help the Commissioner if yeah. you explain your view as sure. to the use of sure. that sort of deposit. Um, so, when the um, recall when the facilities were first established, there was an interest capitalisation built into the facilities. So, um, you could be sure that during the term of the facilities, there'd be no need for further equity and the interest would be. Um, no, it would be automatically debited against the loan account. Um, post that approval, or, or when that facility ended and a new facility needed to be put in place, there would be ongoing reliance for the shareholders to put on, uh, in funds to pay the interest. Remember, this is Wild Lines and Silver Sun earned no income. They, were, they only held land and they earned no income. So uh, my opinion, the requirement for the guarantee was to ensure that there were sufficient funds available to meet interest as it fell due. Now, I just want to make sure I understand that. Your point is, initially, the loan allowed for the capitalisation of interest when it was first yes. established? Yes. And therefore, interest wasn't being paid on an ongoing basis. It was just capitalising. Well, it was being paid. It was being paid out of the available loan yep. funds. Yes. And then you know that it was no longer permitted to be paid out of the loan funds. It had to just be paid on an ongoing basis. Because the limit was fully drawn. Yep. And as at this date, do you know whether the available limit remained fully drawn? No. OK. So when you... Again, I just want to understand when you've expressed your opinion, what your the assumption that you've made is that there's there's no longer available capacity, or the bank no longer has security over the payment of interest. Well, there's no right? mechanism. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now, your as far as I can tell, your statement doesn't exhibit the response that was received by that was sent by Mr Kelly? No. All right, no. I'm sure Mr Sherry would like to know, why didn't you exhibit that document? <laughs> um, I, I don't recall seeing that document until today. And can we go then to that document, which is RCD.0024.0014.0039.0001, So I, I just want to take you to the second page, which is dot zero zero four zero. So this is where there's a reference to the interest deposit account. This is that extra clause of holding six months interest. So that what Mr Kelly is recording that had been conveyed to him was that either 
they could deposit interest into an account or they could prepay the interest. Yes. And if they were prepaying the interest, would that also have... Would that also have addressed the type of concern that you're speaking about? Just trying to identify the paragraph around um, the prepayment. Okay. All right. Is that the that's the paragraph starting with the discussion? Yes. Yeah. So perhaps if we just run through what I understand to be the points you want to make. First, you haven't, you've never seen this letter until today? Correct. In the reviewing of the file, you hadn't been able to pick up this letter and no one had pointed it out to you? No. And the second is that your speculation as to the six months interest is that by having the six month interest sitting there, then that at least gives the bank security over that interest? Yes. And that's a reason why the bank would want it? Yes. To shore up its security position? To ensure that in the cash was available to pay interest when it fell due. And the complaint or a complaint that is being made by Mr Kelly is that the bank is double dipping because it wants to both have interest paid monthly and also to always have six months interest paid or put on deposit? Yes. Do you agree with that point? Um, I've seen that in past transactions from my experience, yes. So you've seen a situation yes. where there has to yes. be both a deposit and the payment of interest? Well, yeah. All right. And then if we go to BRP-36... This is the breach notice that is sent on the 13th of January 2011? Yes. And is it, is it the case that this is exactly what you would expect would be done today in the management of your section, that in the event that the facility had not been rolled over in these circumstances that the breach notice would be given? Um, I'd expect it, yes. Right. yes. And does it matter that there's been this ongoing discussion starting at the end of November 2010 and correspondence at the end of December 2010? Um, the facility has expired. And by giving the notice then as a matter of law, Bankwest is preserving its legal position. I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm not a lawyer. But that's yeah, what you'd yeah, expect that's people what within expect. your section yeah. to do, yes. to just give yep. the breach notice yes. in those sections. Yes. Right. And then there's a discussion that occurs, or a meeting that occurs at the end of January 2011. Are you aware of that? Yes. And you've also exhibited a note in respect of that discussion? Yeah, where's that? Um, I've seen... It's All right, well, we'll bring this up. It's BRP-59, CBA.4000.0072.0229. Yes. So now, again, this is CBA's internal note in relation to this facility. Is that right? Yes. And you've reviewed it in preparation yes. for giving yes. evidence? Yes. Can I just 
draw your attention to a few parts. Mm. You see halfway down the page, the third bullet point under what Mr O'Brien said, the facilities would have reverted to default rates of 18.81%, but a negative margin of 10% has been applied, so the rates are close to what they would have been if the facilities had not expired. Yes. All right. And then if you go over the page, You see, it's explained that what Mr O'Brien had said at that meeting is that the margin will be subject to the risk grade. Those are the top two sentences. Yes, I see that. And then Mr O'Brien explains that the refinance market, or he knows that the refinance market is still relatively closed. Yes. And is it the case that what was happening internally was that CAM was attempting to hand the, the file back to property finance and property finance was saying they didn't want the file? Um. The only evidence of that I see is John Howe's note that I referred to before lunch. All right, well, let's have a look at these documents. So if we go to BRP-60. Yeah. So this is the note that's prepared by CAM. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. And we can see somebody's crossed out 18 February, so the date of it is the 22nd of February 2011. Yes. And the approval that sought is, you'll see this in 1.3 on the first page, yes. to amend the risk grades back to the pre-Magellan risk grades to extend the facilities of Wild Lines and Silver Sun to the 31st of December 2011. Yes. And you'll see there's an explanation of this approach in 1.2, which is that the risk grades have been downgraded by the Magellan Review as a result of concerns about the Silver Sun property, and the concerns have now been addressed through an updated valuation and additional security from shareholder guarantees. Yes. Page dot five five seven seven. You see the section which is current defaults, and the only default that's identified is that breach letter for the facility expiring issued on the thirteenth of January two thousand and eleven. Yes. And otherwise, it's explained there were no monetary or non-monetary defaults. Yes. And then you see in five point two, it's explained that the updated valuation indicated that there had been there had not been a decrease in security value and so in fact the LVR was now only 37 percent yes and then in five point it said the customer has advised that they are not able to provide six months interest on deposit as well as paying interest as and when it falls due it has been agreed that they can provide three months interest up front on a rolling basis if the facility is extended. Yes. Now, you may not have examined the documents in this much detail, but the internal note doesn't seem to have been that Silver Sun or Wildline said they couldn't pay six months interest. It seems to be that they said they didn't think that was reasonable. Is that your understanding? Your understanding? Would it help if I showed you that note? From, yes. Can we bring that up? CBA. Dot, we'll put it up on the other side of the page. CBA. Four thousand. Dot zero zero seven two. Dot zero two two nine. And you see it the. The bottom half of the page are the things that Mr. Kelly said during the meeting. Yes. Then you see the last 
the third last point on that page, they can prepay three months interest in advance on a rolling basis starting from February 2011. Yes. And he did not believe the six months interest on deposit was reasonable. Yes. All right. But that seems to have been, and I don't say this critically of anyone, but that seems to have been understood and reported by CAM as meaning that they couldn't provide six months interest on deposit. I don't know. I don't know. You see, that's what's written in the CAM report, isn't it? It says he, he did not, is this the report you're referring to here? Well, that's the file note on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side it says the customer is advised that they are not able to provide six months' interest on deposit. Yes. Because ultimately the fact that that's what's reported has an effect on the opinion expressed by Mr Howe, doesn't it? Or are you not familiar yes. with that yes. level? Yes, yes, That's right, yes. isn't it? Yes, All right. yes. And then if we go to 5.6... And in the third dash point in relation to Silver Sun, the CAM note explains that the customer had noted that the Silver Sun facility limit was reduced by $250,000 in September 2010, which is more than the bank required to be lodged on deposit. See that? Yes. And then in, at the bottom of the page, you see there's section six, which is the revised strategy. Yes. And this explains that in 6.1, that the Magellan Review noted that an urgent valuation was required for the Silver Sun property to ensure that the property value had not significantly decreased, but Wild Lines was considered status green. Yes. Now that's, we've seen already that's what came out of the review by Grant Thornton of this file. Yes. It's slightly different from what the review panel ultimately recommended. Yes. And then it's explained in 6.2 that the revised valuation was obtained and, in fact, the property value hadn't decreased, it had increased. Mm. Yes. And then for it's explained that the customer acts professionally and is cooperative with the bank they understand the need to exit these facilities from the bank and are working to enhance the value of the properties in order to obtain retain refinance. Yes. And then if we go over the page to page dot five set five seven nine. In six point six we see although refinance does not appear to be a feasible option at this point. It is noted that an alternative option to appoint a mortgagee in possession to the wild lines... So, and sorry, so what number are you... Sorry. I'm sorry, dot 5579 should be page 5 of 10. <coughs> OK. Have you got that? Of 5 of 10, yes. And you see 6.6 .6 at the top. Yes. Now, to be clear, as far as we can tell... There never seems to have been any serious consideration given to appointing a mortgagee in possession. Do you agree with that? I agree with that. <laughs> and then if we go over the page to page 6 of 10.5580. <coughs> yes. You see eight point, the, this is the risk rate and pricing 8.2. We recommend that the group be regraded to the pre-Magellan risk grades, given that the issues raised by the Magellan review have been addressed. Yes. And there's a recommendation in 8.5 that the pricing for the facilities be decreased to 3.5%. Yes. And then if we go over the page to dot 5581, this is the recommendations and approval sought. Yes. And you see much of this repeats what we've already looked at and then it's proposed that the risk grades are upgraded. We see that a third of the way down the page. Yes. The facilities be extended to the 31st of December 2011. Yes. And then in the third last point, the group be returned to the control of business credit. 
Sorry, which point? See the third last dash point oh, yes, on the yes, page? Yes. So can I, we recall we were having a discussion a little earlier about whether business credit is a separate section of the a separate division of the bank, mm. separate from property finance. Mm -hmm. Does this help you to say yes. whether business credit is a separate division? Uh, business credit yes. um, is a part of risk management. It's, it's the credit department that supports a business. Okay. So you, your understanding is that it's to be re returned to the control of the risk department? Within the business, yes. With, I'm sorry, within the business. That well, is it, yeah, that supports the business. <laughs> So. It's, it's not to stay within CAM, it's to go back to... The it's where the decision, decision making goes from CAM to business credit. Yes. And then if we go over the page to dot five five eight two. And this is what, this is what gets signed off on by the chief manager yes and relevantly at the the last three points we see that the interest is to remain at 3.95 percent yes the facilities are to be subject to cross default yes and the extension of the facilities is only to be considered to the 30th of September 2011 yes and is it fair to say the point you would make about this is different people look at these files and they form a reasonable view as to the risk involved with the files and therefore the approach that ought to be taken. Yes, yes. And the fact that the proposal made by Mr O'Brien and the other and the other part of the CAM team, which presumably was Ms Rivera, was Ms Rivera, the fact that their view as senior managers is different from the state manager doesn't really tell us anything other than that, that different people look at things and have different views about it. Uh, yes. Um, yes. And is there anything in your experience Obviously, you weren't involved in Bank West, but mm. in your experience running the GRS, is there anything that seems unusual in this approach to you? In this approach? Yes. A, a different hierarchy? No. No. And can we then look at CBA.4000.0089.0613? So this is a collection of emails. Can we go first to the page dot zero six two eight? This is Mr. Edwards, who we understand was the manager of commercial valuations within Bankwest, emailing Mr. O'Brien with comments on the valuation. Have you looked at this document before today? Yeah, you recall seeing this before. This wasn't yeah. part of the file that you no, looked this at? this wasn't part of the file. All right, maybe if I just ask you some general questions then. Yeah. Is there any, this is obviously some commentary being provided by Mr. Edwards as to the valuation. Is there anything unusual in the internal valuer providing comments on the external valuation? Um, I, I can't comment on the Bankwest process. Okay. Um, but um, it, it, um, was practice in CBA. Yes, and the only particular point that seems to be noted in relation to this by Mr Kelly is that it has taken some months for this to be resolved. 
that is the valuation is provided in October of 2010 and Mr Edwards is commenting on it in March of 2011. Does that seem like a particularly long period of time to you? Um, if, I, I can't really comment on that. I don't know what discussions there were in between or whether there was anything in between the request and this new memo. All right. Can we go to CBA, I'm sorry, to page dot zero six three zero? This is an email you have seen. Yep. This is the email you were referring to before sent by Mr. Howe. Sorry, just because it's being recorded, you'll need to speak a bit louder. Okay. That's, that's the email you were referring to? Yes. And this seems to be Mr Howe, as the State Manager of Business Credit, pushing back on the CAM view that it should be repatriated, the, I'm sorry, Wild Lines and Silver Sun should be repatriated back to him? Yes. Is there anything unusual from your perspective in that sort of approach from Mr Howe? No, no. Um, from, from my understanding, from what I've been told, is that practice was that when a um, customer was transferred back to business credit, they were asked to uh, review prior to transfer. All right. And then... So on the space, this just appears to be the person who is going to have to then take responsibility for the files saying, I don't really want the files. They should stay with you. Making comment about the file, yes. Yes, making comment and then saying, I'm not comfortable or I have difficulty with repatriation to the business and that means his business. Is that right? Well, his view is in the, is in the last paragraph of the, the letter, yes. And then, and you haven't discussed this with him, have you? Um, no, no, I haven't. You haven't really discussed this file with involved in it? Yeah, I have discussed it. With oh, you him. have? Yeah. yeah. Who, who have you discussed it with? Um, Andrew Skill, Skill, okay. Greg O'Brien. Oh, and what was their, let's, their, let's start with Mr Steele. What was yeah. Mr Steele's view about the management of the file? Um, well, he worked for Mr Chapman at the time. Um, he, none of no, these issues are particularly, although he mightn't have been involved in this part of the file, um, but he was, um, his view of the management of the file was that he was surprised by the uh, events of coming up to expiry of the, file, of, the, of the initial facility. Surprised by what events? Uh, the events of Mr Paul, Clark, uh, Paul Clark's note, and that's, he referred more, uh, when I spoke to him we talked more about that, at that period. And sorry, what, um, you'll need to be a bit more helpful yep. for us, yep. I think. He was surprised by what events precisely? Um, the, the, the note that came from uh, Mr Clark. Which note is that? It's the email that's in my attachments. Oh, about yep. how the business was to be managed? Yes. yes. That's the general note, not the one related to this specific file? Is that yeah, right? the general note, yes. Yep. And he was surprised by that, mm, why? Yeah. Um, I don't think he was expecting it or expecting it, yeah. Wasn't expecting the mm. bank to take mm. that direction, mm. Mm. is that right? Yes. And was he surprised at its application to this particular or these particular files? Um, I didn't ask him to be surprised about his, his feelings about the application. To these files? Mm. All right. Did you speak to him about these files? You mean Silver Sun and... Wildlife. Wildlife, yes, yes. Okay, and what was his view about the way in which they'd been managed? Um, well, he was he was a manager before before this. Right? Yes. Um, he didn't offer me a comment on the way they were managed. After he was no longer involved. Yeah. Well, even du during he was involved, he was he was just told me he was managing the files. All right. All right. And then you spoke to Mr. O'Brien. Yes. And did Mr O'Brien have a view about the way the files were managed? Um, he, his only view on um, 
that he needed to have a look at the valuation and uh, with the view to send it back to the business unit, the issues raised by uh, Project Magellan, um, and consider the issues um, that, uh, and have a look at the file and consider the issues that might come up in terms of the options, which I think he's covered off in one of his notes. And when you spoke to him, did he express a view about the attitude that was coming back from the business unit? No, he didn't. All right. And so if we then go to dot zero six four zero. And maybe if we bring up dot zero six four zero and dot zero six four one, which is the next page as well. So what happens then is that Mr. O'Brien gives a very detailed response to the points that have been raised by Mr. Howe. Yes. And ultimately, the position of Mr. O'Brien prevails and the files get moved back to property finance, or they get moved to property finance. Yes. They get moved out of CAM. Yes. But that's not until May of 2011. Um, from, I believe so. And was Mr Howe involved in the property finance section? No, he was in risk management. Credit, and credit decisioning. Sorry? Credit decisioning. And you understand one of the complaints that Mr Kelly has made is about the fact that the interest rates kept going up throughout yes. the period of throughout the period that he was with Bankwest. Yes. I just want to work through a few points about mm. that. One is these internal issues that were happening about whether or not the file should be in Project Magellan, whether it stayed in Project Magellan, whether it got moved back out of pro out of CAM into property finance. Would they have had any effect on the interest rate? Um, they may. Um, I don't know. I don't know. C certainly, the interest rate decision was made. You talking about the three point nine five? Is it? Well, there are a number of decisions, but that's right. There was a three point nine five percent increase for Silver Sun in in about September or October of two thousand and ten. Yep. And that presumably would have been made based on the risk grade that had been given to the facility. Yes. And the risk grade had been increased by the Project Magellan panel. To seven plus, yes. So logically, that would have affected the interest rate? Logically, yes. Beyond that, once you get into what's happening in early 2011, is the to and fro over whether or not the files get moved back, moved, moved out of CAM, something that would have had a bearing on the interest rate? It should have, and one of the things I called for was to look at the analysis behind the 3.595 interest rate, which was like nothing available. There was nothing available? Yeah. yeah. Right. Was it, did you get analysis as to the other changes in interest rates? Um, I asked for the uh, model, uh, the models that were, were applied um, back, particularly the guidelines going way back, and uh, nothing was able to be provided to me. All right. Now, the other thing that I want to show you and get your comment about, Mr. Perry, is the email that was sent on the 28th of February 2011. I'll just turn that up. Is this bundle of emails to go in? I tend to that, Commissioner, thank you. Exhibit 3.95, emails between Nathan Howe, O'Brien and others, March 2011, CBA 4000, 0089-0617, 3.95. Can we bring up RCD.0024.0014.0044?
And this is an email we were looking at before, which is an email sent to Ms Rivera, sent by Ms Rivera to Mr Kelly. Have you seen that document before today? No, I haven't. Okay. And you'll recall, you listened to Mr Kelly's evidence this morning? Yes. You'll recall that Mr Kelly in response made a number of points about these matters not having been mentioned in the meeting on the 24th of January 2011? Yes, I do recall. And you'll also recall that Mr Kelly had been making inquiries about the interest rate that was to be charged on the facility? Yes. Facility? Yes. Facility? Yes. And that the response of Ms Rivera was in relation to your query about the interest rate for wild lines, we note that the facility is expired and the bank's standard default rate is 18.81 per cent. Yes, I see that. And <coughs> as you know from the internal bank file note about what was discussed on the 24th of January 2011, there was a discussion about the interest rate being reduced. Yes. And that was a file note prepared by Ms Rivera. This one here? This one here? No, no, the file note that we looked at before on the 24th of January 2011 had been prepared by Ms Rivera. Can I just go back to that? Yes. Can we bring up on the other side of the page BRP-59? This is the note we were looking at. It's prepared by Ms Rivera. Yes. And you'll see the third bullet point that Mr O'Brien had advised a negative margin of 10% has been applied. Yes, I see that. Do you have a view as to the appropriateness of this email on the 28th of February 2011? Um, that's inconsistent with the email that says the re default rate is 18.81. It doesn't <coughs> refer to the 10%. The, uh, Do you have a view about the various additional requests being made for information in that email of the 28th of February 2011? No, I don't. All right. Um, no, I don't. Commissioner, I don't have any further questions for Mr Perry. Yes, thank you. Mr Sherry? Just one question, Commissioner. Um, Mr Perry, at transcript 2596, about line three, you were asked about the proposal that the customers um, be asked to refinance, and you said that was in accordance with prudent banking and regulatory approval? Yes. Or regulatory approach, I should have said? Yes. What did you mean by regulatory approach? Uh, in, sorry, repeat the question. I missed the first part again. Sorry. You were asked about the request that there be refinancing, that is, that they go elsewhere. Yes. And you said that was consistent with prudent banking and, quote, regulatory approach. Right, yes. And I'm, just, I'm just asking you, what did you mean by regulatory approach? Um, I, I recall that um, I was talking about regulatory approach into the uh, management of the um, property limits for Mr Clark, I call, if I recall. And there's a couple of aspects there that um, uh, banks have um, obligations to maintain their credit exposures by counterpart. Um, there's another um, requirement also uh, that banks manage their credit appropriately. Um, and my view on that was that the uh, refinance and working with the customer to, was, was a better approach under those credit management standards. 
Thank you, sir. Okay. Thanks, Commissioner. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Perry. You may step down. You're excused. Yes, Mr. Hunt. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner, Sorry, there's going to be a slight change of council at each end of the bar table. Could we adjourn for three minutes or so while we do that? I'll come back at 10 to 3. Thank you.